The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, my name is Rebecca Wallace. I am the EdMaps Data Coordinator. Um, North Carolina Invasive Plant Council invited me to do a presentation and demonstration on EdMaps Pro, so that's what I will be going over today. Um, this will be a live demonstration. I have my uh, phone mirrored on my there we go. Show screen. That will help. My phone mirrored on the uh, computer here, so you'll get to see a live demonstration as I walk through the app. Um, I will also be going through the EdMaps website to show how it goes from the app to the website and how you can get data back out. Um, if, you, if you have questions as we go along, you can put them in the questions box, and I will answer them at the end of my presentation. And um, also at the end, we'll be uh, soliciting ideas and opinions and uh, you know, people to give uh, future webinars for uh, you know, either for, from Bugwood or for the uh, North Carolina IPSI. So I'm just going to start with um, mentioning that, uh, so I mentioned I'm the EdMaps Data Coordinator. I've been with the Center for Invasive Species and ecosystem health since 2011. Uh, the center is also known as Bugwood and it started in 1994. And one of the things we do amongst many is we create these tools to help to either groups work together or to make uh, their jobs easier in general. So um, I am going to just make this bigger, there we go. And so this is a mirror of my phone right now, and I am going to be, there it is, EdMaps Pro. So EdMaps Pro, you can download from, um, from your Apple Store as well as your Google Play Store, and it's free to download. When you download it, you are going to want to um, um, <clears throat> use your existing uh, login that you have with EdMaps. If you don't have one, you can register in the app itself. So just to kind of mention this, um, EdMaps Pro is designed for professionals. So we have several other apps that are, um, that are more geared toward citizen scientists and more casual observers. So EdMaps Pro, uh, some of the different things you can do with it, you can view records offline, you can download data sets, you can uh, record data and save it to your phone. You can revisit uh, records and so forth. Um, so just to kind of give you an idea, this is actually centered on our office because that's where I am. This is the home page. So after you've uh, downloaded the app, this is exactly what it looks like. Um, and it shows you where you are. So this is where I am right now. This is uh, in the top left corner. This, these little three lines are the menu. The gear up here in the top right is the settings. The uh, plus sign down here is to uh, create a new record. So I'm just gonna go through and show, oh, and this is the refresh button. So if I actually, uh, uh, I can't, oh, I can't zoom out. Um, so if I zoomed out, you'd be able to see records. <laughs> Sorry, this is my first time using this. Uh, let me see if I, uh, let me see, oh, here, uh, so, there we go. <clears throat> no, zoomed back on me. Well, I will figure out in the future how to zoom out and in on here. So this is opening the menu here. Uh, your options in the menu are for to return to the invasives map, which is the map we were just on, image projects, which is a new uh, feature we added for the Utah County Weed, County Weed Supervisors. And that allows for documenting before and after images at, at a particular site. Data sets, that's where you will download your data sets to your phone for offline use. Offline maps are um, 
they are if you wanted to download background maps. This is not currently quite figured out um, for nationwide yet, uh, where we're still working on that. And then uh, your upload queue, as I mentioned, you save reports to your upload queue and then you download them later. Um, and then app settings, uh, it's just uh, in app settings for this particular app. So I am going to show you the data sets now. And um, so this is a short list of data sets. And that's because in EdMaps, let me pull this over here. Um, I've signed into EdMaps. If you go to My EdMaps, on the left hand side is my county list. So if you click on my county list, what you can do is select the counties that you are interested in. So you'd select the state, the county, once you have entered a state, and you can add or delete counties uh, for your area of interest. Now, if you haven't done this, what you'll get is all of the counties for all of the states in here. So I recommend you go ahead and have the shortened list of counties to, to worry about in this particular um, app. So this uh, arrow next to the county means uh, that you want to download a data set. You tap on that to download. After you've downloaded them, you'll have boxes on the left here. And you can select or deselect. Let's select. There we go. If you want to show those, uh, those data for the county. Uh, the button right here is to refresh your data set, and we always recommend before you go out in the field to refresh your data set in the office. That way, if data has been added since you've gone out last, you capture that information uh, before you go out in the field. And then this little uh, trash icon is to uh, remove the data set from your phone so that you as you add more data to your phone, you're increasing the size of, uh, of the app in your phone, so to speak. Um, so I always recommend just have what you need when you're going out in the field. So in this case, I have Orange County, North Carolina selected to show. So um, the upload queue, I don't have anything in there. Oh, I do have something in there. So uh, this is where all your app, uh, your Reports are waiting to upload. Your app settings, um, refresh your state list, refresh your subject list, uh, save your photos to your gallery. You can send feedback to us and there's uh, statistics and the version you're currently on here. So let's go back to the invasives map. So right now um, I am in uh, South Georgia. It's very hot here today. And I want to um, kind of, can't zoom in, of course, add a new record. So uh, I can use my location where I currently am, and it'll just drop a point exactly where I am. I can draw a polygon. I can drop a marker, so drop a point, or I can start by taking a photo. So if I wanted to draw a polygon, I would first select the, uh, the type of polygon I wanted to draw. A free form is just any which way you want to draw it. A vertice is dropping uh, points at the corners. So let's see if it'll drop points and say this entire area is infested with something. And then if you want to redraw it, you can select delete and try again. So that one wasn't quite to the corners. Oh, come on, there we go. There we go. Oh. Let's see if that'll work, there we go. And then now that we're satisfied with it, select done. So now it's saved our polygon, and we want to select, see if it'll let me type. Nope, it's not gonna let me type. So what we will do is um, 
you can actually just scroll, you can start typing in your subject, it'll start auto-suggesting. So I'm going to say that we have um, air potato. So this is what the report form looks like. Because I drew a polygon, it actually calculated that area for me. Um, you can add images, and you can either take a picture right then and there, or you can choose from your gallery. Uh, you can edit your observation date. Private means I want to record the coordinates, but I don't want them to show to, uh, to the public. So if you select that, those coordinates will only be available to you. But the record will still show up in the right county. It'll still show up as a county level record in the database. Um, the map is just showing the polygon centroid. So it's centered on that green area I selected. We can actually zoom out to see it. Time spent in minutes is very useful for if you're running um, a crew or a volunteer group and you need to document how much time is being uh, spent. Infestation status positive means I found it, treated means I found it and treated for it at the same time, and negative means I did not find it. Uh, be very careful with these. We have occasionally had people accidentally select negative when they meant positive. Habitat is where the ecosystem in which you found it. Density is the approximate infested area um, as a percentage. And then you can add additional notes and you can add separately treatment comments. So if you did treat it, you can say what you sprayed it with, what mechanical treatment you used and so forth. So if we save this, that report is now saved to my upload queue. And um, so from there, we can go to my upload queue and it shows me the different um, reports I have made. So I made this lesser celandine uh, record a couple days ago. And if I wanted to, I can come in here, as you saw, I clicked on it and this lets me go in and edit the information. So if I said, well, you know, that area wasn't quite right or I wanted to change my density because, you know, I, I went back and looked at it, it was much more dense than I thought it was or if I want to add any additional comments, you can do that. You can add additional images, and um, then you would uh, save your, your report after you've made your edits. So once you're um, satisfied with your lineup here in your upload queue, you can tap that square button and it gives you additional options. So you select the records that either you want to delete or you want to upload, and that will allow you to uh, create uh, to have those actions to those. So I actually know that these reports are not correct. So I am not going to send them to the upload queue. I'm going to go ahead and trash those. So now my queue is empty. To go back, I would select the uh, the menu option and go back to the invasives map. So now that uh, if I had uh, uploaded one of those, or if I had um, added those to the database, they would have it would have shown up right there. So the settings will allow you to actually um, change the type of map you're you're looking at. So if you want to look at a hybrid map, a satellite map, and so forth, you can do that. So let's look at what a hybrid map looks like. And that adds all the satellites as well as the road uh, pictures on top of each other. <clears throat> you can select to auto follow and as you're moving around, uh, the little blue dot and the map will follow you. Again, you can turn your image projects on and off. So if I wanted to show my projects on the map, I could. These are uh, the different filtering options. So if you wanted to, Filter what you're seeing on the map by um, by the different types of status, say. This will let you say, okay, I only want to see positive, I only want to see treated. You can do that. You'd select those, and those are the only reports that will show up on your map. Uh, you can also say, I only want to see species that are on different states' lists. So right now, these are the different states' lists we, ha we have as those are the projects we currently worked on with, uh, with those different states. So I can actually select on and off 
different species uh, to only show those records on the map so that I'm not seeing every record of dandelion and henbit and chickweed. I'm only seeing the uh, species that I actually am monitoring or that I might care about. Now, if your list is different, you can actually select your species specifically. And so if you only want to see alligator weed and burnweed and a myrrh honeysuckle and uh, Asian clam, because, you know, those are fun, you can select those to be the only records that you show. Uh, you can also filter by, by date or revisit date. So if you only want to see records from the last two years, you can select that. If you only want to see records that have not been revisited in the last two years, those are all the filters that you can apply. And then if you've filtered too much and you've gotten kind of, uh, you know, a little bit too restrictive, you can clear all your filters and that will actually start you back from the beginning. So, um, let me just... Make sure. So once you've sent your records to EdMaps um, and they've they've gotten out of your your review or uh, your upload queue, what you will actually be able to do um, is see them on different maps. Um, but let's say uh, I just want to go through and show you quickly how a little bit different the reporting forms are. So you can report sightings through EdMaps itself. So say I want to report a sighting through EdMaps, and we'll go ahead and pick North Carolina. It'll start by asking you what type of species you want to report. So I'll pick plants. And as you'll see, um, this has a lot more options for the, um, the reporting form. And we did that on purpose, we have found that uh, those who want to um, report in the field don't necessarily want to stand in the mosquitoes and the gnats and the midges, bothering them to make a report to fill out all this extra information. And it is extra information. Um, so the required fields in the form are represented in red. So again, you'd pick your species, you'd select what type of uh, report it is. Uh, again, it automatically fills in the observation date, but that's editable. Um, additional information such as abundance, canopy closure, uh, phenology or morphology or life stage, depending on the species you selected. And then again, in here, uh, you can also, draw a polygon, drop a point, and you can actually also draw a line, which is not a feature in the app itself. Um, you can also directly enter your latitude and longitude, though we don't recommend that because there, there have been some issues in the past with mistyping of coordinates. Um, as in the app, you can add photos, so select photos from uh, the file that you um, have loaded your photos into. You can add additional comments. If you collected a voucher specimen, you can add that, and then you would submit your report. Um, one other way you can add data is through, um, if you have been collecting data for a long time, you can actually send me, the data coordinator, your files. So if you want to upload data, you would go to um, my EdMaps, and then you'd go to my uploads, and you would upload data. All this is is a file uploader. You're just sending me your files. I will actually go through and evaluate the files and look at what the data is in there, if it makes sense, if, fall, if it's falling where it's supposed to fall based on the information provided, as well as um, if I have any questions, I'll contact you about, well, what does this field mean? Or, um, you know, get, get additional information if some of the critical information is missing. Uh, once you send in your files, um, you can actually view your uploads for uh, status. So in this case, I, these were test files I had submitted, and so I marked them as removed. Uh, the other options are pending, um, and upload, and uh, new submission. So that will uh, let you know where I am in the process. And so if you um, 
once the data is submitted, it comes in as unverified data. So it's not available on the maps. All data that comes in, whether it's from bulk uploads or it's from individual reports through the website or through the app, needs to be uh, reviewed before it's uh, made available. So our verifiers, if you want to know who our verifiers are, you can go to the tools and training page and you can actually look up the verifier. So in this case, we'll see if we can find who the verifier is for alligator weed in, well, not in Kansas, in North Carolina. So you just drop it somewhere in North Carolina, or you can drop it in a specific county if you know what county you're interested in. And in this case, it's Bridget Lassiter and Ian Finsting. So Ian is with the USGS. He is interested in aquatic plants. And then uh, Bridget Lasser is with North Carolina Department of Agriculture. And this will also give you additional information. Does this appear on a, on a state regulated list? Has it been reported there before? And just what's invasive species lists it is on as well. So that will give you an idea of who is verifying your records. Uh, the verification process is uh, fairly simple. So um, in this case, we will look at, I have some reports in here. And uh, yes, I do. Oh, that's, I'm not a species. So I today submitted this report of Japanese beetle that I saw over the weekend. And it has the images there. It has all the information, who submitted it, when they submitted it, where it was found. And then the, the reviewer will go down the page towards the end and they can see um, they have these different options here. They can request additional images if the images were sent to them or if they went out in the field and found the species. They can upload additional images on their own. They can request additional images from the, I'm sorry, additional information from the reporter or they can go straight and decide that there is enough information available to review the record and they can review it and release it to the public or they can review it and not make it public. Uh, some reasons they might not make it public can be that uh, there's regulatory issues or there's privacy concerns or some other different types of concerns. So if they elect to review and release it, the, uh, this is what the form looks like. The not release form looks very similar, it just has a couple additional options. So they'll say how they verified it and so these are some of the options there. Uh, and it just tells the uh, people later looking at this record how, uh, what methods they used to uh, ascertain you know, whether it was correct or not. They can um, select how positive they are of the identification. And if need be, they can uh, change the subject to say that wasn't a Japanese beetle, but it was another invasive beetle, or if it was some other type of insect that they could identify, they are allowed to change the subject. And then they can add additional comments. And once they're uh, satisfied with the report and the, uh, the verification, they can um, submit their, their uh, review. Um, so once data is available in EdMaps, it's um, viewable on the distribution maps. So if we wanted to say go to cheat, no, let's not do cheat grass. Let's do Japanese stilt grass. It's viewable at the state level, which it just colors in the states where it's found. So all these states have at least one positive report. At the county level, it tells you which counties have positive reports. So Japanese stiltgrass is essentially all over in you know northeast through the mid-Atlantic, across the south, into the Midwest. Um, pretty prevalent. You can actually look at some of these other maps. So this will tell you how many reports there are in each of these states. So it kind of shows this. Uh, there's a fair amount in, Kentucky, uh, in Tennessee, a little bit in Kentucky. It's in North Georgia. You find one or two reports maybe in some counties in in Florida. So that gives you a better idea of not necessarily the area covered, but the number of times it has been seen. 
Uh, you can also look and see, well, where, did, where are these reports coming from? Are they coming from actual observations in the field or are they coming from, from literature or from both? So this gives you uh, where the data is coming from. Is it coming from someone who said they found it when they you know, published a book on plants of the, uh, the mid-Atlantic region or is it coming from observations or like I said, is it coming from both sources? And then you can also see the points map. The points map also gives additional information beyond just was it found there. As I mentioned, there are additional options. When you're reporting, you can say, I uh, found it, which is a positive. And in this case, those are red markers. Negative, I looked for and did not find it, or uh, it was reported as it, but it was not that species. And then uh, treated. So I. While I was there, I found it and treated it at the same time. So uh, each of these points you can click on and open, scroll up, open on the map the information available through the report. And then if you click on that, it'll take you to the actual report with all of the information associated with it. So, uh, Jared Calvert found it in, in Kentucky. He found it at this location, and that's how much of it there was. From these uh, records, you can also conduct a revisit. So if you happen to go out there and see it again or treated it, you can elect to do a revisit through the website, or you can do a revisit through the app as well. Um, so um, let me see if so I was having trouble pulling up on the app, the revisit. So I will just pull up on here. Where is my revisits? Sorry, just one second. I'd hope to be able to do this all through the um, app. It's a new observation, existing record, revisit. So this is what the revisit form looks like. Oh, no, went to the other. Let me transfer my screen over. Screen two, there we go. So uh, this is what the revisit form looks like in the EdMaps app. So let me actually go back. Uh, if you click on a point in the app, you have the options to view details and you have the options to report a revisit. So if you elect to report a revisit, um, you will select the little icon in the top right. So let's say I went out and saw this, went to that area and said, yep, I'm gonna do a revisit. It's still here or it's not here or it's, I treated it, so forth. That's, here we go. So this shows the existing record ID at the top. Uh, if you wanted to denote the type of revisit, so if you're just going out to monitor, if you're performing a treatment, you can uh, select the different types of revisit options. The revisit date, it again defaults to the current date, but you can select to, uh, to edit that. With revisits, you have an additional option. So instead of positive treated and negative, you have positive treated and eradicated. Now this is only, eradicated is only available through the revisit form. You can't go to an area and make a new report and have it just be eradicated. And you can't, um, we're, we don't have it where you can do a revisit of a negative and it's another negative. You can add additional images. Uh, your infested area, if the original record had infested area with it, it will default to the original infested area. You can change that, of course. Um, you can also select the density. So if you were doing a treatment, you had been doing treatments over time, you can say that um, you know the density is changing over time, even if the infested area might not be changing. Uh, again, you can add additional notes and um, separate treatment comments as well. And these revisits are available when you look at an original record. The revisits will appear below it um, in the 
on the website as and then on the app itself. Um, I'm sorry, this is the top right icon is to view revisits, the bottom right icon is to add a revisit. Sorry, I was uh, had those uh, switched around there. So if we reported this as a revisit, it will show up um, in our review queue to upload and it will appear with the original record as well. So let me switch back to my first monitor. So any data that comes in um, and is publicly available is also available for download. So if we did go back to the points, you can click on one of these and download an entire species at one time. I do not recommend it. It will not go well for you because you often don't need all of the species across all of the United States and Canada at one time. So I recommend you go to the tools and training page and you can click on advanced query tools. This will allow you to specifically say, I want to see Japanese stilt grass. And as I type in, it'll start suggesting things. In North Carolina, I have a lot of additional fields I can add in. So if I wanted to say only between a specific date range, I could do that. If I wanted from specific reporters, so if you're running a uh, volunteer crew, you can get their specific data back out. If I only wanted treated data and positive data, I could elect to download only that. And so I don't get any eradicated data or negative data. And then, so I am going to uh, search for this. So Japanese stiltgrass in North Carolina, only positive and treated data. And then I'm gonna click submit and that will take me to the map of that. So in this case, it's instead of tens of thousands of records, it's 2000 records. Um, and this will tell you there's 2000 records in total and then 1260 with the exact location. What this tells you is that there are um, about a thousand records that are only at that county level. So that what that is, is either those uh, data came in only at the county level to begin with, or there are data where someone submitted it but selected that private option I mentioned. If you elect to download the CSV, you will get all uh, 2100 records. If you elect to download the shapefile or the KML, that will only download the records with the exact location. So whatever you're particularly interested in, if you want all the data, if you only want data with some sort of shape or coordinates to, you, to it, that uh, is what you would want to download. So let's say I want to download the shape file. And it will compile that data and send me a link to my email shortly so that I can uh, then use the data however I want to. So I will go ahead and close that. And in uh, a short amount of time, I will receive an email notification saying that's what they're, um, they're looking for, or that's what I was looking for. And then that data can be used in any number of ways. We do have a lot of people who use the data to, um, in their research, they use the data to um, create species lists. They use the data to um, know what to look for in their own area to create watch lists as uh, this isn't in our area yet, but we should keep an eye out for it. We need to know where it is and so forth. Um, and this also will allow you to, uh, if you download the data, to run your own statistics. So if you want to put together a report for some sort of grant agency that you are working for or received funding from, you can do that. Um, all different ways that people tend to use this data. So just to go back to that tools and training page for just a moment, uh, if you do need additional information, additional help, if you need additional resources, if you're doing a training, all of that information is available through here. So we have PowerPoints and PDFs uh, telling you how to set up alerts for your profile, how to add revisits, how to use the advanced query tools, um, 
as well as uh, data dictionaries if you download data and want to know what a specific field means or what type of data might be in that field. All of this information is available here. And we also have statistics. So if I wanted to see what the status of North Carolina was, um, so I went to North Carolina status for North Carolina, and this tells me what types of invasives they have in North Carolina, what specific species are in there, as well as their numbers of reports, how widespread these species are. So kudzu is found in 100% of North Carolina. Uh, Japanese honeysuckle is found in 99% of North Carolina and so forth, um, as well as how many spe species are found in each county. North Carolina, like uh, Georgia and Florida and so forth, they tend to have a lot of invasive species. Well, as most states tend to these days. So this just kind of gives you additional um, uh, value added from the original data itself. So if we look at Utah, another one of our uh, high participating states, they too have a lot of invasive species. And so you can see all the different kinds by category. They have a lot of squarrows, knapweed, and thistles, and uh, other types of knapweeds. And they have a lot of their state covered in invasive species. Oh, well, that's a lot covered in invasive species. Um, and this tells you again, the number of, of counties, uh, the counties and the number of spe invasive species reported within those counties. So I have um, kind of gone over the very basics of these, uh, these, these tools. I showed you the EdMaps Pro app, which again is for professionals. It does not include, say, a field guide, which most of our other, other citizen scientists apps have. It's really for professionals and landowners and uh, people monitoring an area specifically over time to uh, report the status of the species uh, through, throughout that, that area they're looking at. Um, EdMaps website, as well as the other smartphone, smartphone apps are very, very much more geared towards the, uh, the citizen scientists with the species information and the specific lists for specific areas to kind of get them focused on the species they'd be able to easily find and um, or the species that are most highly uh, prioritized in that area. So I, uh, is there anything else that you guys are interested in? I didn't want to inundate you with every single tool and feature that is available through these different, uh, through these different apps and websites because that tends to be a bit overwhelming. But um, is there something that you, anyone in the audience needs for, uh, for things they need to do for their job? Is there uh, features that seem to be missing or that I might not have gone over? Are there uh, you know, any numbers or statistics that if we had them would be really useful? Or are there any particular questions that you may have uh, in general about either EdMaps or EdMaps Pro or one of our other apps, perhaps. So uh, you can ask your questions down in uh, the questions uh, box and I will read them out. Let me open this a little further because there are a few. Okay, so Carla Porter, show means show locally on the smartphone or show publicly to all. So, um, I'm assuming that's meaning for the private. Private is show the coordinates or the shape uh, publicly. So show, as you're making the report on your phone, yes, you will still be able to see the shape, um, but after you submit it, the public record, once it's reviewed, will only be at a county level. So it will not show up on the, uh, so it will show up on these county distribution maps. So if you say the all the reports in here, say they were all marked for private, so do, so do not show. Um, then it will only appear here on this county level map, but it will not appear on this point level map. 
So say say those uh, reports were not uh, marked private. Um, our reviews paid government, uh, again, Carla Porter, our reviews, most reviews paid government employees or possibly volunteers. The reviewers, uh, the verifiers are the individuals who are educated and or trained in a particular area. They're often locally based. So um, uh, with the county weed supervisors in Utah, they are, um, they're responsible for each of the counties. They're, they're um, responsible for as part of their job. And they all, uh, because they also use the app to document in their county, um, they are reviewing as part of their job, but they're not paid by us. All reviewers and verifiers are, um, are not paid by EDMAPs or any sort of funding through EDMAPs, but they would find benefit to use EDMAPs as part of their job. So the verifiers are often from either a, um, a university, say they're doing research on a particular species or a certain, a certain category of species in a particular area, and so we will have them be verifiers for uh, those types of records in that geographic area. Um, but they don't have to be employed by a state or government. We do have individuals who work for programs, nonprofits, that they have the education and training to be able to identify certain invasive species. So they are added as verifiers for a specific set of invasive species in a local area to them. Uh, is the query tool also how you download data sets to the app? Um, Emily Finch. So uh, Emily, no, the way you download data sets is, so let me pull this up again. So to download data sets to the app again, this is where you're starting from. You would click on the menu and you click on data sets. And here's where you download these data sets. So I'm gonna download Wake County, North Carolina, and it's gonna be processing. And uh, so now it's downloading and then it'll be parsing. And that's how you get these data sets onto your app itself. And um, that will, it's going really fast. Um, so it'll just take a second. And once it comes up, there you go. It'll have this little box next to it. So do I want to show it or do I not want to show it on the map? Um, the refresh button, or do I want to remove it from the app itself? So um, I should have downloaded one for our area, but I didn't have that selected already. So that what that does is it just shows all the points on the map and it'll look something like, uh, let me see. It'll look something like, and uh, let me see if I have a screenshot here to show you of all the, It'll basically look like the points um, go away, that you see on these maps here. So they'll just be a bunch of either uh, clustered dots or individual dots on the map. Um, uh, Robert, who has already left, uh, I, as I mentioned at the beginning, at least I hope I did, the uh, Video will be available through the Bugwood website. Uh, sorry, the Bugwood YouTube uh, website. Uh, the so the query tool is just uh, for uh, downloading data just for your own personal use or for re research use. Uh, is there a way to discon? Sorry, Emily Finch. Is there any way? 
dis. So, okay, okay, I think I'll. I'm in Indiana, and I have heard that unless we use the Glendon app, local verifiers might not see the report. So, Glendon is one of the apps through Bugwood. So, just to kind of give you an idea. So, our applications, EdMaps Pro is one of them. Hey, there's my data. Um, so Glendon is right here. Glendon, anything that comes from Glendon comes from Outsmart, comes from EdMaps West, um, comes from, some of these are not reporting apps, comes through Seeden, EdMaps Ontario, I've got one, EdMaps Pro, Maiden, all these different apps, they go into the same exact um, pot of of records and then the reviewers say i am responsible for this particular you know these particular species in this particular geographic area so you don't necessarily have to use the glendon app you can use edmaps pro you can use the edmaps website and these will all go in through the same uh into the same records for reviewing now if you're reporting through something like mizzen um that data eventually can come to edmaps but it's not part of the edmaps umbrella um so does the data okay sorry carla porter does the data reflected from status of invasive come from data added from both apps regular and pro So the status of invasive is, if I'm understanding correctly, that's the positive, negative, treated, eradicated, that's that status. And that status is set by the user when they're making a report. So if I went to report sightings and I selected, I'll just say Georgia, because that's where I am, and plants. So status is, if I'm understanding you, this part right here and so you can say positive species is found at the location negative species was not found treated you found it and treated it at the same time and so the apps um so pro and uh, the edmaps pro app and the website you both have the opportunity to say what type of status uh the record was when you when you reported it and then that status is reflected on the distribution maps. So again, let's just jot some grass. So these reports are a mixture of positive where it's red, treated where it's yellow, and where there is blue, it's negative. And there's blue somewhere. There's some blue out in California. Uh, when you download the data, um, let's go ahead and Download the data. So I'm just going to show you what looks it's. This is a shape file, but um, I can open it in Excel to show you this at least. So this is the occurrence status. So these are showing you where it's, you know, when you download it, what's positive. Let me see if I can find some. I think there were a little bit of treated in there, but probably downloaded too much to show you to find it easily so um positive is reflected on the report itself when you go look at the individual reports it's reflected in the data when you download it oh sorry i'm trying to get statistics of species so does the data reflected from come from so let me go tools of wrong statistics. So are you talking about when I was in here, uh, Carla? Statistics of species. So you're trying to say, does it take into account the? Uh, um, I'll have to double check to see if this is parsing out only non-negative 
non-eradicated records. I am actually not positive. I haven't looked at this in a little while. Oh, here we go. Widespread invasives by number of positive counties. So I'm fairly certain that at least these At least this is only looking at non-negative data. But I'd have to check to see if some of these other statistics are only looking at a, a particular status. Okay, so does anybody else have any questions? And uh, just to, while we're waiting, just to let you know, you can download just these types of, of statistics here. So if you wanted a quick what's being reported, how much, how much of our state is just absolutely covered in invasive species, you can get this data fairly easily. Um, and it's available, like I said, for download. You can even say, I don't care about anything but plants. So you can get rid of particular categories of all you're interested in are specific types of um, types of species. So doing that you used to have, like most of the Southeast, Japanese honeysuckle is completely covering basically the Southeast, uh, different types of privet and so forth. All right, well, I think that might be it for the questions. Um, as I at least once now mentioned, the record of this, the recording of this, will be available through the Bugwood YouTube channel. So here is the Bugwood YouTube channel, and you can go through and see the videos. Uh, these are some of our most recent videos. Um, and this will, uh, if you have some other interests here, some of these are pretty good. And it will put it up here in the next couple of days. Um, so I will uh, go ahead and thank everybody for, oh, one more thing. Uh, is USGS uh, non-indigenous aquatic species data integrated with EDMAPS? Um, so uh, yes, uh, but not all of it. So mostly just the plants have been incorporated into EDMAPS. So, USGS and EDMAPS have a relationship, a data sharing relationship. Um, we haven't quite hit the right balance for some of the USGS data just because they're extremely comprehensive. And um, so their maps will actually show data where a one fish was caught 50 years ago in one watershed area and that works really well for, well for their maps because that's historical data um but it makes our maps look like those are current infestations and so some people were having an issue with including some of that older data so the plants data has has come into ed maps and we have shared data with them for um for plant data but for some of the aquatic, um, like fish data and invertebrates and, and some of that type of data, we have not incorporated that. Um, and Carla, well, I'm, oh, okay, so I am glad that uh, some of the things I showed you will help out with your invasive plant ID workshop you're having in September. Um, the maps themselves are also downloadable. I, don't believe I mentioned that. So if you do go to the distribution maps and say, uh, let's say garlic mustard, because that's also covering everything ever, you can actually download these maps themselves. So uh, if you click this download button, it will take a minute, but it's thinking about it, and it will download it. And in addition to having the map and the species name, you'll actually also have the, there we go, the date it was downloaded. So that's a dated uh, map so that you can have that in there. And if you talk, want to reuse your presentation, as I often do, um, you can go and look at it and go, oh, well, that map's a year old. Maybe I should go get a new map. So these maps are, are downloadable and usable as well. 
Uh, if you do want to use any of the uh, maps, uh, we just ask, there's a citation at the bottom that um, allows you to uh, just draw, you know, copy that and paste it into a PowerPoint or just on presentation material that you may have. So you can download any of any of the maps uh, that way. You can actually also embed these maps. So if you're running a website, you can, uh, and you say you want to do a blog post or a newsletter or something, uh, you know, live on your website. In addition to just sharing the it through um, your social media, you can actually embed the maps directly into your website. So. We do have some single species. Uh, big. There we go. So this is a single species uh, topic kind of website and they uh, run through us. And if you go to their distribution map, this is a completely and totally live map. So as someone enters data onto EdMaps, it actually gets reflected in, you know, and, and it's reviewed and made publicly available, it's uh, immediately dropped into this map because it is a live map. So if you have a species or series of species that you uh, are focusing on for your own uses, you can embed these maps into your, um, into your website as well. So I think that's about it, okay. Uh, so I want to thank everyone for, for joining me today, um, and I uh, was hoping again to ask if there are any, if there's anyone interested in future webinar topics, uh, go ahead and drop those in the questions box, and um, I'll make sure that uh, we get those to the North Carolina IPSI, and they can uh, look at them and try to come up with some really good uh, stuff for the future. So I will keep that open for just a minute. And um, so if there are any, uh, if there's any interest in, you know, specific individuals or topics that, you know, you guys are interested in, I know that um, North Carolina is very close to Virginia and Virginia just recently have had uh, spotted lanternfly kind of creeping along its way. So if you guys wanted a spotted lanternfly person to give a talk, I think that would personally be great. Um, that's a very, very uh, hot species uh, to have come in and threaten our various uh, natural areas and agricultural areas. So I'm putting forth, get, get someone to talk about spotted lanternfly. But if anybody else has any ideas, go ahead and drop those in the uh, in the questions box. So, all right. Um, but I uh, guess we'll go ahead and nothing is coming up. So I guess we'll go ahead and uh, end this webinar. Again, it'll be available through the Bugwood YouTube channel uh, if you search. Bugwood into YouTube, you should be able to find us fairly easily. And um, I want to thank everyone for joining me today. You had some great questions, and I hope this was useful. So thank you very much.